In this video, I want to talk about my experience and how I passed the DA100 exam. I want to give you some tips and how to prepare for the exam when you take it. We're going to go through it from the very beginning. So when I decided to take the exam, uh, how to prepare for it, and also during the exam and what you should expect. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So I took the exam a couple of months back, uh, back in April and from what I remember my result was around 85 to 90% mark and the passing grade is 70%. Before I took the exam I had some prior experience with Power BI, I had about 5 years of functional consultant experience which means that I knew bits and pieces of Power BI but not fully just enough for me to do my job and actually before this one I already held the MCSA BI reporting which is the predecessor of the DA100 it's the old version uh, that I did and passed last year 2020 uh, and it consisted of two exams one for Excel and one for Power BI so because I already had some experience with Power BI, I gave myself about a month to prepare for this exam. Uh, and because I work full-time job in between, uh, I just gave myself uh, an hour every night to prepare for it. However, if you're taking an exam like this for the first time, or maybe you're not too familiar with Power BI, I suggest you give yourself maybe two or three months to make sure that you have enough time to prepare um, when you take this exam. So after I have booked my exam, the very first thing that I did is to check the exam outline. Now you can find it from the exam page here where you prepare to schedule your exam and it's just at the bottom here uh, and from here you can see the skills outline and what it will measure and this is handy to know the weighting of the specific categories so uh, what they'll test you on and what you should ideally focus uh, your attention to. Um, but what's even better is you can download the exam skills outline here, which breaks down these topics into individual uh, sections to give you a better understanding of what they will test on those specific uh, topics. So if you're already working with Power BI on a sort of functional level and you just want to fill in the gaps of the knowledge that you don't know because you don't really use them on a daily basis, um, you can look at this and actually pick out some of the stuff that you don't know or you're not familiar with and actually study them individually. It's sort of more convenient that way. However, if you're looking for a full end-to-end -end training, the very best place that I can suggest to you is the Microsoft Learn learning paths which is at the bottom here you'll see it under the free section and it gives you different learning paths for uh, different sections of power bi um, and what's great about this is that it follows the skills measured at the top there so these learning paths ensure that it covers all the topics of the exam end to end and the modules are good because they're compact uh, but also they include things like skill checks where they check your knowledge uh, using multiple choice questions and also lab sections where you can actually apply and do activities as you learn, which really helps if you're a doer, basically. So for my preparation, I spent about two weeks completing this module um, and it didn't take me that long to complete them because I already knew about Power BI. Um, so for yourself, it might take a little bit longer if you don't know much about Power BI. What I suggest is when you prepare for the exam, you dedicate half of your preparation time in doing and mastering the Microsoft Learn modules uh, because this will serve as your fundamentals for the exam. The second half of the preparation is doing the practice questions available online. Now there are tons of free and paid practice questions that is available for you online. So I'm not gonna uh, link to a specific one. I would say this part helped me a lot to get me into the exam mode. So as you know, the 100 exam is mostly multiple choice questions and it might give you the illusion that it's easy because it's just multiple choice questions. But the problem is that you need to make sure that you actually read the questions and uh, find the details uh, because a lot of the questions will look like the answer is one thing but actually because of the details it might be another so this part actually helped me ensure that i caught all of those 
sort of trick questions. One tip I can give with the practice questions that you find online is don't trust the answers that you get from them. Instead, treat the questions as its own separate thing without an answer and try to find the answer for yourself, either doing your own research or asking the community. Another thing is that don't treat these questions as questions that could come up in the exam. Uh, typically, you will hear them as dump exam questions. Uh, just because from my experience, a lot of the questions at the very end, the ones that have a lot of weight, are based on scenario questions. These scenario-based questions will basically give you a fake scenario, so fake company, uh, fake job title, and fake requirements. And it will ask you questions based on those very specific scenarios, which won't be covered if you're looking for questions and answers that are very generic. Uh, which is why I highly encourage you to uh, dedicate half of your time with the Microsoft Learn because this is where you will rely on uh, so much for your fundamentals with Power BI. So how was it during the exam day for me? Well, the exam was about two and a half hours and I took about maybe an hour and a half to complete all the questions. Uh, not that there are lots of questions, but a lot of questions that I wasn't quite sure what the answer of, so I had to read them again and again. And for the majority of the time, I was spending a lot of time on the scenario questions because I had to um, consume the scenarios themselves. Um, and understand the question that they're trying to ask. I did the exam remotely. I did it in one of our spare bedrooms and you needed to do that because you need to find a space where you can't be disturbed for the duration of the exam. Otherwise, they will fail you automatically. So as I said, the questions are all multiple choice questions. The first part is the sort of easy part, which is your normal uh, questions and answers. Uh, these ones you can kind of uh, answer and if you're not sure, you can go back and one tip that I can give from here is uh, if you're not sure of any of the questions or the answers that you give to these, you can actually mark them and come back to them later. So don't spend too much time thinking about them um, because maybe you will find the answer later. So mark them and move on to the next one. So the next part are the scenario based questions. Now for the most part, um, and from what I remember, these ones you cannot go back to once you've completed the scenario. So you can't go back and change your answers. And this is why you had to spend a lot of time rereading the scenario and reading all the materials that they give you before you give your answers in the multiple choice questions. So from my memory, I was given at least three different scenarios that are quite unique from each other. Um, each individual scenario had about five to seven questions that are very specific to them. So these scenarios, as I said, gives you, let's say, a fake company or a fake job title or fake requirements. And the type of questions that you get for these scenarios are very specific to it. So for example, um, what kind of permissions should you give to your clients if they just want to view the report? Um, and you can't just answer this with a very generic uh, answer from the internet because uh, you need to understand the context of it from this scenario which makes it a little bit trickier to answer so you need to make sure that you pay attention to the materials that they give you the summaries that they give you um, because it's quite a lot when you complete the exam at the very end they will give you your results straight away so you don't need to wait for it they will give you the pass and the fail and also uh, what is your score like the percentage um, with the score you will also be given a breakdown of how you did um, on each of the different topics that they tested you on. So this is how you can measure uh, where your weakest points, uh, where the topics that you didn't uh, do so well, and they give this to you regardless if you pass or fail. And that's really it for my experience with the D100 exam. Uh, as you noticed, even though I had a lot of experience with Power BI, I still wanted to give it the respect of you know, revising for it and making sure that I'm fully prepared for it, uh, which is why I've given myself a month. I hope this video helped you understand what it takes to pass the DA100 exam. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really enjoyed this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks for watching again and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.